Hello, I'm Jacob. Welcome to the Preppers Bunker Outdoors. Today is new gun day, super duper stoked. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you my initial impressions of the Smith & Wesson 317 kick gun. So what we're gonna do today is, uh, first off, we're gonna take a close up look of the gun, at the gun. I'm gonna tell you what I think about fit and finish, whatever else. And uh, then we're gonna shoot about we're going to shoot exactly a bunches of ammo through it. Precisely a bunches of ammo. This ammo here, interestingly enough, this Winchester, you can see I wrote my name on there. Looks kind of childish, like a seven-year-old wrote it, because my dad found this ammo in our house, and a seven-year-old wrote it. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Real quick, I was watching YouTube reviews on this pistol, and reading reviews on forums and they were like 90% uh, negative or advising that you buy another pistol. So why would you drop serious cash on a pistol where 90% of the reviews are negative? And I think in one review I found the answer to most of the negativity uh, that was found throughout all of the other reviews. Uh, nothing fancy especially. And that is that the uh, aluminum doesn't play well with lead. We're gonna see if that's true. So we both have cheap lead bullets that are who knows how old. And then we've got some golden bullets which are coated here. We'll see if there's any difference in reliability, accuracy, etc. With that, uh, what we're gonna be shooting today is the extended gun Skele targets. Um, they're basically my favorites because they're bright, uh, colorful, and they show me what to shoot at. But uh, why did I buy this pistol? You might have uh, noticed from my last video that I had a Ruger Mark IV Hunter and I wasn't happy with it eventually because once I had it in hand, I realized it was so dang heavy that it didn't make any sense for what I wanted, which was uh, not only a hunting pistol, but one that I could throw in the bag for a bug out bag or whatever. Um, and when I started looking at multiple 22s and realizing that my fully loaded Glock 17 that I carry every day with 18 rounds of self-defense ammo was 35 ounces. So if I was going to have an additional emergency 22, it needed to be considerably lighter than that. And uh, one of the few options, especially if you're not going to buy from Ruger, is this gun right here. So let's take an up-close look at it and let's put... Uh, exactly bunches of ammo through it. All right, because I'm sure people will ask, this pack is made by the Hidden Woodsman, and uh, these are all cool people. The Preppers Bunker Outdoors patches are available at beachandtactical.com. Gadsden Dynamics is legit. I like shooting Fiocchi ammo. Let's take a look at this pistol. Man, it is hot out. So what's special about the pistol, it weighs 12 ounces. Basically everything is aluminum except for that thin stainless steel barrel sleeve, uh, the cylinder rod, trigger, hammer, internals, sights, whatever. 12 ounces, guys. It feels like you're not even holding a real gun. So um, the first thing that I've got to say when you pick up this pistol, especially if you're used to uh, more affordable stuff, is you notice immediately the fit and finish, the little details, like this out of the trigger guard here is just beautiful. The hammer and trigger both have kind of like this, uh, it almost looks like a surface hardening finish, almost like a color case hardened, but more muted. Beautiful, I mean really, um, the gun, the aluminum, doesn't look very cool at all, but the details, look at the checkering on the hammer, it's just wonderful. Williams Fireside action, actually that's not, I don't think that's a Williams Fireside, but anyways, fit and finish, really a pretty, pretty pistol once you get past the bland, uh, honestly cheap looking aluminum finish. Um, you have eight shots, 
double action, single action. So uh, let's get some rounds through this and then uh, I'll talk about what I want to do. This is going to be the beginning of a kit gun project. There's something that I forgot to talk about when I went over the fit and finish on this. I'm not a revolver guy. I know that that gap is important to people. I haven't gotten out my gauges to measure exactly what that gap is. Um, I'm going to say it's exactly pretty thin, but who knows? That might be, might be good, might be bad. I'm sure the people watching will know better than me. Also, lockup has ex precisely that much movement. Good or bad, I have no clue. Um, we'll just see how it shoots, and I'm sure someone in the comment section will educate all of us on those two very precise measurements. All right, so to start out, I'm loading up some of this absolutely ancient lead bullet Winchester ammo. What we're going to be looking for is I want to see if we've got little fragments of lead in the cylinder. Because uh, from what the guy said, he thinks that the, uh, the aluminum itself is, uh, I guess, not as smooth. It kind of grabs onto the lead as it comes out of the, uh, out of the chamber and pulls chunks of lead off of it as the barrel, as the lead bullet is escaping. And that can cause the cylinder to jam up and all kinds of other issues and terrible accuracy. So that's one thing we're going to be looking for. Uh, I will be using my little vortex spotting scope so that I can see where I'm hitting. Uh, this is a, a 10 power scope, 25 millimeter objective lens. I did get this from Optics Planet to review. So I will put a link to where you can pick one up yourself in the description box below. And uh, it's not going to work as well as a spotting scope, an actual spotting scope, but we're pretty close here and my eyes aren't too good and it weighs nothing so it's just too easy to bring with you and for a prepper that's a win-win so before we get started with our shooting gotta throw on the danger glasses or the battle glasses if you will and uh let's get some rounds down range hopefully today we'll make sure that thing, this thing is reliable see how it shoots see how tight of groups we can shoot and get it kind of zeroed but it's not going to be too serious we're just basically looking for reliability and we're going to be comparing lead bullets to jacketed bullets so let's go let's see oh my All right, looks like we had one dud from ancient ammo. We've got solid uh, hits on each round, so I would definitely say that was a failure from ammo. We are empty. We do have a lot of crap in the cylinder here. Uh, I'm gonna load it up again and shoot a whole bunch more and then I'll we'll take a look down the cylinder and see what we can see and then we'll see if it's any better with jacketed ammo. That was a bad example. There we go, that's better. 
So we do have a little bit of what could potentially be some shearing of lead. I've been checking it after cylinder after cylinder. Most of them usually don't have it. I think it's usually just this one cylinder, but it could potentially be that uh, that one cylinder is just a little bit tighter and the aluminum does grab the lead a little bit. I'm not exactly sure. At this point, I'm only, I don't know, 200 rounds in, 300 rounds in. So once we uh, have shot through all of the lead, then we'll go over to the copper jacketed stuff and see if it comes out any better. By the way, I realize some D-Bag's gonna see my Crocs in this video and think that's really funny. So just FYI, my ankle's broken and doesn't fit into normal shoes. That's why I'm wearing Crocs. Holy cow, a wifey snuck up on me. Dinner's almost ready. All right, thank you. Um, I'm almost ready too. 
Take Jimbo with you. All right, so we have shot through the entire old box of Winchester Expert 22 hollow points, 36 grains. Um, you know, I said that there's exactly a bunches of rounds in here. I'm going to guess between 400 and 450 rounds. Uh, not a new box, so I can't be sure, but it was mostly full. So now we're going to be shooting, I'm just going to shoot a little bit of just normal, regular golden bullets. We're going to load it up here, and uh, we're going to see if we see any of this ugliness in the cylinders or barrel. And if not, you know, copper plated might be the way to go. But I will say, these fit in a little bit snug. I will say that uh, a little bit of nasty lead left behind never made this gun lock up and never made these round, the rounds hard to eject. So, uh, for whatever that may mean to you, it is what it is. Um, my accuracy sucked today. I'm going to say it's 99% me. It's definitely possible that some of that ammo sucked. So, in later videos, we'll run some match ammo through this thing and, uh, and see if I can print some some nice targets. It's possible that some of these flyers and stuff were caused by ammo, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse. So let's put on the uh, CM goods and uh, kill this iron here. These must hit in a way different spot. Now, that's funny, that whole time, no issues, thought that the uh, golden bolts were going to run better. Woo! That old girl is really in there. They were tighter going in though too. And uh, I wasn't running this hotter for that cylinder than I was with the last ones. There are plenty of times where I dumped a whole cylinder pretty quick. But uh, I'm going to let it cool down before I really reef on anything. That's wild. And it just goes to show there's probably ammo that this revolver likes better than others. I'm going to give it a second, then we'll see. Real quick, while I was out there, I forgot to show you this, but uh, after shooting the jacketed bullets, we've got no lead in the cylinders. We've got a little bit of crap there, but uh, I definitely think that your jacketed bullets are going to shoot cleaner, which is kind of obvious, but I think the size of the cases that you're shooting is more important than whether you're shooting lead or or jacketed bullet uh, 22 long rifle so I'm pretty excited to shoot some more ammo and see what this thing really likes or see if that might just be a fluke batch of ammo all right I got the cylinder unloaded there I did have to use a uh, motivational device nonetheless uh, this is actually not Remington Golden Bullets. Once you've taken the time to tape up a box like this so it's not annoying, you might as well reuse it, right? So these are actually Winchester Super X. They are hard to put in, and that just means they're going to be... I don't know if I'm going to be able to eject all of these easily before they're fired. A couple of these cylinders are whew, tight with this ammo. Let's see... All right, load it up, all Winchester Super X. I don't know if you'll be able to actually see that or not. Got them out, but just barely. So, let's load it back up, shoot it, and then see if we can pop it out. These do not want to just slide in though. That's uh, a little bit wild. Yeah, 
put on the CM goods, the danger glasses, the birth control glasses, if you will. All right. Funky. All right. Moment of truth. <sighs> Seems like a generally poor idea on my behalf. Wow. Those suckers are just really in there. Whew. So, uh, note to self, the Smith & Wesson 317 does not like this specific Super X ammo. It's very interesting. Oh, by the way, someone will ask if this gun's been safety checked. It is full. There is one in the chamber because I don't carry unsafe guns. An unloaded gun's an unsafe gun. That's foolishness. All right, so what do I think initial impressions? The, uh, the single action trigger pull is just wonderful. Super, super light. Other people have said it's about three pounds. Uh, based on my uh, trigger weight scale, um, I would say that's at least in the ballpark. It's just very nice. I'm gonna freaking take these out because I'm done shooting so I can stop yelling. So a trigger pull in single action, very nice. Double action is doable. I'm, I'm not used to double action at all. I don't think I shoot double action anything ever. Um, it is long, and I found if you actually pull the trigger more quickly, almost jerking it, which is the worst sounding thing I could ever say, it was a lot more accurate for me. I, and I kind of had to hold low, such a light pistol that I think I was wanting to pull it up just slightly. Um, not to make excuses for myself, just got to learn, but, uh, what a sweet pistol. Uh, I believe fully with the accuracy of this pistol that if I do my part, that it will make a, uh, a great little squirrel gun, even though I'll be shooting a way longer distance. I'll have to take the time to put good ammo in it, really get the zero down and shoot it at some dis different distances. But uh, as far as reliability, everybody complains about reliability with this pistol. Uh, maybe it just has some ammo it doesn't like. That does happen. Um, you know, I'd like to say that it eats everything, but I think it's probably not gonna like certain ammo. But uh, let me talk about the future for this pistol real quick while I've still got you here, if I do. Um, I'm going to build a emergency kit. It'll be a hunting kit, it'll go in the bug out bag, an E&E &E kit, a sear kit, what have you. And the purpose of this pistol will not be to, sup to replace a fighting pistol, because the fighting pistol should always be on me. The purpose of the kit will be either in a fanny pack or in a pouch to all, or for hunting or whatever to always have a little 22 pistol for hunting with some extra ammo in a completely separate pouch that's fairly waterproof that I can take out with me and probably have some other little survival gear in there as well. Who knows? That's what I'm going to do instead of a holster. So I'm thinking instead of a holster, You'll have a military style pouch with the top flap, almost like an IFAC. And uh, in here, I'll probably make some foam or something to hold it in place and then have an MTM little ammo case filled with some 22 long rifle in that same pouch and then make sure the pouch is waterproof. Um, so I'm not going a traditional direction with uh, the holster on this pistol. It's not a traditional pistol. Um, the other thing is I do want to get a combat fanny pack set up because a lot of times wearing your fighting pistol up on your belt is not comfortable when you've got to carry a bunch of gear. The fanny pack is the answer. 
And I got that idea from Jaeger and I raised an eyebrow at it first, but honestly, it is the way to go. So uh, on the way, I believe I have some Hogue Grips, g Mascus G10. They're a little bit shorter, a little more packable, very grippy though, and I think that that's gonna be awesome. I did plan on Cerakoting this, um, and with everybody's complaints about uh, the finish and how long it lasts just being simple aluminum, it seemed like a great idea. Uh, online, I couldn't seem to find if uh, Smith & Wesson would honor their warranty on a Cerakoted firearm. It makes sense that they wouldn't, but it seemed like everybody was saying different stuff. I called up Smith & Wesson. Hey, uh, if I get my pistol Cerakoted, will it void the warranty? No hesitation. No, let me ask somebody. Nothing. They were just like, yes. Instantly. I was like, oh, okay. So if you're a Smith & Wesson person, do not Cerakote your pistol. That, But Smith & Wesson, if you're paying attention, if you could make this pistol polymer and aluminum and cut like $200 off of the price, uh, I think everybody would want one of these, especially if you did it in like an FDE polymer. That'd be phenomenal. And why that would be so cool is when you scratch it, you can't really tell because the color goes all the way through. But I really wish I could get this Cerakoted. It's not gonna happen, but we are going to build a kit. So do I think that this pistol is worth the $650 that it typically goes for? Even though for the same price, you could get a Model 63 in stainless steel, weighs about 26 ounces. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I am completely satisfied with this pistol so far. First impressions video. Um, so we're just going to keep banging on it, keep doing videos on it. Hopefully we can tighten up the accuracy or I'll learn to shoot, you know, whatever. And uh, we'll see where we can take this thing. And in not too long, I will be taking you guys on hunting trips with this. Where hopefully I put dinner on the table uh, using my kit gun. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to support this channel, please go to beachandtactical.com. It's my website. I hand make uh, mill spec rifle slings, baldric slings, just tactical and survival gear. And uh, I, it's all custom made to order. Uh, I have a huge variety of colors. Everything's very compliant, mill spec, made in America, etc. Um, also, I do have a Patreon please consider supporting this channel directly. It wouldn't be possible without my patrons. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed yourself and I look forward to talking to you in the comment section below. Have a blessed day.